Happy New Year, everyone. In this video, I put together six new policies you need to know when buying or selling real estate in Toronto for 2024. Some of these you might be shocked even exist in Canada, but for the ones who knows what's up, probably won't be surprised at all. Whether you're thinking of owning or already own real estate, this channel is a free educational platform dedicated to giving you the truth and helping you become a better player in this real estate game. Now, let's get to it. Number one. The vacant home tax. Starting from 2023, all property owners in Toronto must declare whether their properties are vacant or automatically pay a 1% tax based on their assessed value. However, in 2024, they have now increased this to 3%. The program brought the city an extra $54 million into their coffers, so now they want more. I have a detailed video explaining the vacant home tax here, so if you want to get into the details of that, you can just watch that video. Just keep in mind that the tax is now increased to 3%, now not 1%. You have until February 29, 2024 to declare this. It's a simple process, so don't procrastinate and leave it till the last minute because there are financial penalties plus a lot of hassle if you're late. I made another video here if you want to actually know how to declare the, actually file the declaration. In addition, I put the link to the Toronto City website in the description below so you can get more details of this. So if you own real estate in Toronto, don't forget to do this as this is a mandatory requirement. Number two, the foreign buyer ban. 2024 is currently scheduled to be the last year of our two-year foreign buyer ban, which prevents foreigners from buying residential properties in what they call the census agglomeration or the census metropolitan areas. Basically, any big city in Canada. You can check out the details of the areas and the specifics on this program on the CMHC website in the description below. According to the CMHC, less than 2% of all the residential purchasers were foreigners. Upon hearing this, our brilliant government decided that foreigners were the problem when it came to housing affordability, so they banned them from buying for two years starting from January 1st, 2023. A few months after the ban went into effect, there were a bunch of exemptions that were put into place to reverse some of their policies for international students, foreign workers, and refugees, pretty much making exceptions so that foreigners could buy again absolute genius yes i have no idea what they're thinking but i guess it makes sense if you're a high level decision maker in the government to me this seems like more of a political play rather than a viable solution to our housing problems what do you think has this ban had any impact on real estate affordability it says right here on cmhc's website the government of canada has passed a new law to help make homes more affordable for people living in canada let me know in the comments below. Keeping with the spirit of blaming all the foreigners for all our housing problems, we have number three, the non-resident speculation tax. There is a 25% tax applied to foreign buyers if purchased after October 25th, 2022. This originally came into play in April of 2017 at 15%, introduced by our wonderful premier at the time, Catherine Wynne. Along with a myriad of other genius real estate policies, like making us do the same work twice with their standard lease. She's really made her mark in the real estate industry with her policies. According to Webster's Dictionary, there's another word for the systematic oppression of a racial group to the social, economic, and political advantage of another. Hey, but what the heck do I know? I'm just a real estate agent who has to tell foreigners to screw off because our government doesn't allow you to buy a home in Canada because Canada is only for Canadians. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. For more details about the non-residential speculation tax, check out the link in the government website in the description below. Number four, property flipping rule. This is another gem that was introduced to us in 2023. Starting from January 1st, 2023, if you sell any residential property within one year of purchasing it, it will be considered business income, not capital gains, or be eligible for the principal resident tax exemption if it's your principal residence. There are some exceptions to this, like death and other life-altering circumstances. You can see all the details of this in the government website, link in the description below. Depending on your tax bracket, this could be a hefty tax on your profits if there are any. If you're in the highest tax bracket, that would be over 50% of your profits. This rule was introduced to prevent real estate speculators from flipping properties which couldn't have come at a worse time given our current real estate market. Hey, Mr. Taxman, you missed the boat on this one. Most of the flippers have come and gone. 
made out like bandits. To have been effective, you should have introduced this 10 years ago. This just shows you how brilliant our leaders are. I hear Canada has a pretty handsome prime minister. It's true, though. Number five, property tax assessments. If you are wondering why your property tax assessment hasn't changed for the past five years, well, that's due to the pandemic, which was probably the only good thing to come out of that nightmare. The Ontario government postponed the 2020 assessment update. Therefore, your 2024 assessed value for property tax purposes will remain the same as your 2023 values, which was the same as your last reassessment, which was done in 2016. It used to be that properties were reassessed every four years, so it looks like the next one will be coming in 2025. This is great for property owners as the property assessments should be a lot higher than they currently are based on where the real estate market went. As an owner, you obviously want your assessment to be as low as possible, but I've seen new owners getting upset that their assessed values were so low. You can see more details on the property assessment at the link in the description below. And finally, we have number six, HST on assignments. For those who don't know, an assignment is when a buyer sells their right to purchase the property to another person. It mostly happens in new construction, and this is happening at an astonishing rate in today's marketplace as speculators who have now purchased new construction properties can't close on their properties given the high interest rates. I've heard about one guy who brought 14 properties all with the intention of flipping. He had zero intention of closing. I forgot to tell you, I have a gambling problem. I wonder how he's holding up on this market. It's like dominoes. Once one starts to fall, they all fall. So to make the situation worse, the government is making you pay even more tax than before. What could possibly go wrong? Actually, this tax was implemented as of May 7th, 2022, where all assignment sales are taxable for GST, HST purposes. You can check out the details on the government website in the description below. Stack this tax with the property flipping tax and the government is just sucking away your profits if there are any. Again, the ship has sailed on this one a while ago as well. Gone are the days of hundreds of thousands of profits that were made by savvy investors paying little or no tax. This is another one of those policies implemented at the absolute worst time and would have been more effective if introduced 10 years ago when all the profits were made. That one's a sorry. Assignment profits are going to become a thing of the past as we continue in this high interest rate environment as overpriced properties complete and come onto the market. The norm is going to be assigners taking a loss and you can't tax that. I understand nothing. Bravo, Mr. Taxman, bravo. Now, in all seriousness, there are a lot of people out there who are going to be affected by the high interest rates in the current market. Maybe that's you right now concerned about the unexpected payments that you now have to pay towards your housing costs. That's pretty much the most asked question I probably get from people right now. What do you think is going to happen to interest rates? I'm in the same boat as most of you as well. I actually had four closings in 2023 alone, so I had to get mortgages at the current interest rate so I feel your pain times four. Although two of them are negative cash flow, one is a principal residence. The last one is actually positive cash flow because I bought it so long ago. Fortunately, my other investments are all cash flow positive and are locked into fixed term mortgages. So they balance out my portfolio by covering the properties that are negative cash flow. Thank God for my wife because she actually saw this coming at the uh, start of 2022. So she went on this crazy uh, fixed term rate locking spree. However, me being the real estate expert who has over two decades plus of experience and believe the narrative that I could always lock in when rates start to go up, thought she was absolutely crazy. Everything in her name was locked in, but one of my investments under my name was at a really good variable rate, so I did nothing. I should have listened to her and fixed my rate, but I didn't, so now I'm paying like $2,900 instead of like $2,200 per month. This is a very humbling experience, and the lesson I learned from this again is no matter how experienced you are or you think you are and whatever expertise you are in, you can never predict everything that's going to be happening in the future. And most importantly, listen to your wife. I'm hoping that 2024 is going to be better than 2023, 
but I'm not that optimistic. Actually, if I think about what could happen and all the people who are going to get hurt this year, I'm pretty pissed. I'm pissed at many of the stupid policies that don't address the underlying issues. I'm pissed at the utter incompetence of our policymakers and our authoritarian government who made the bad decisions to put all Canadians in the current situation we are in. There are a lot of good, innocent people whose lives are going to be completely ruined because of all the lies they've been told. All the greed and real misinformation on real estate, finance, and health. Where is the accountability for the people responsible for everything that has happened over the past few years? Just ask yourself right now, are you better off than you were before? Is life easier for you or more difficult? Stressed or less stressed? And the endless lies, when are they going to stop? It's just lie after lie, excuse after excuse. It's always someone else's fault. When are we going to have someone take ownership of this and say enough is enough? I was born and raised in Canada my entire life, but I really do not like the Canada that I'm living in today. I've had serious conversations with my wife about possibly moving to another country. Never in my entire life had I thought about this before because I love this country and I still do. I've actually had a few clients actually pack up and leave saying they will never return. I'm sure you know people in your network who've done the same as well. Wake up, Canada. See the reality of everything around you. Higher prices, censorship, division, hate, lies, and selfishness. These are all big problems that one person can't solve on their own. The entire society has to shift to tackle these challenges head on, but I'm just one man, so how can I change this? I don't know what's going to happen in 2024, but what I do know is I need to wake up and I need to wake up as many people as possible who are willing to listen, to see what's going on around us and that we've been deceived and have had the wool pulled over our eyes, some of us for our entire lives. We need to speak up when it's required and change the world from the inside out, starting with the people who are closest to me. I'm only one man and I don't have the power to change society. However, I have the absolute power to start with change in myself. I have a habit of writing down my New Year's goals every single year. Most of the goals I don't achieve and some I fail at within the second week of January. After doing this now for about two decades, I just realized the whole point of this goal exercise, it actually boils down to accomplishing just one thing, and that is to become a better version of myself compared to last year. That's it. It takes time, effort, sacrifice, and discipline to become a better person, to stop doing the things that bring me down, control my anger, stand up for what is true, stop putting poisons into my body, detox my mind with good things. With my limited knowledge and personal experiences, life to me just seems like to be a difficult journey which ultimately ends abruptly with death. We are all on the same path, and to live a good, fulfilling life, it has to come through purpose and growth. The good news is that everyone has the ability to grow and have already done this without any effort at all. As a human adult, we have all started out as a useless baby, but look at us now. It was a series of small incremental changes, so we all started somewhere small. Small changes can grow into something big over time. No one is the same person as they were when they were a child. So why do so many of us stop growing after we become an adult and behave the same stupid way year after year. To answer this for myself personally, I think it all boils down to my laziness. So how can we change this? Let's start with the person who is closest to you, the person who you love the most in your life. I got this from a book that I'm reading right now, but I wrote a small half paragraph note to my wife that took me about five minutes to write about how much I appreciate and love her. After reading this to her, she was in tears, probably because... The last time I actually expressed this to her was quite some time ago. In that moment, I filled her life with joy, purpose, and meaning, and all that it cost was about 10 minutes of my time. All life has meaning, so I challenge you to start off your new year with expressing gratitude and love to the closest person in your life and see how that goes. In 2024, let's try to change our families through love. Let's try to communicate better and remove the anger Hopefully, this will spread to our friends, our network, our community, our city, and then our entire country. Let's each of us, in our own way, contribute to a better 2024 for those around us so that when we look back 10, 20, 30 years from now, 
we can say that 2024 was the year I decided to change, and thank God I did. If you made it this far, I'm glad you did. Happy New Year, and I hope this year is a year of positive change for you and your family. Although it may be a difficult year, and you're faced with a mountain of challenges, may you grow to be a better version of yourself so that you can face the future challenges that life will throw at you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.